April 28, 2016. From El Cajon, California, this is episode 98 of You Can Bet On That. Hi everybody, welcome to You Can Bet On That, a podcast for the recreational gambler. My name is Mark Duvall, and sitting across from me is Dr. Mike. Hello. Well, we've got a lot of phone calls. We're kind of backed up on voicemail since we didn't get to them uh, all of them last episode. So this is going to be mostly phone calls uh, okay, on this good, episode. Good. Yeah, yeah. That's what we like. But uh, first, we got some news. Actually, it was listener Ed who originally pointed us to this story. So beginning on May 10th, exchange wagering on horse races will be available to New Jersey residents through two companies, uh, Betfair US and Darby Development. So exchange wagering, what's exchange wagering? Well, exchange wagering allows players to bet kind of amongst themselves outside of the racetrack's paramutual system. So two people can make bets with each other right, for whatever terms they agree upon. Right, exactly. So for example, player A says, I'll offer two to one odds that the number five horse in race three at Monmouth Park will win. And player B sees that player A is offering those odds, so he says, okay, I'll take that bet. And then the company running the exchange wagering just basically brings those two people together. So I mean, uh, brings them together like online or on the phone? Yeah, or? online. So, well, I mean, you know, it's basically a brokerage. Okay. I mean, that yeah, it's not something where, you know, they have to contact. They don't know I, each other. No, but it's just what I'm saying is the company is, is you right. know, the means for them to be able to, you know, negotiate and, and go through this process, right? And the, I say negotiates. That's a, a nice additional thing is that, you know, players can negotiate. So like maybe player B says, well, I won't take that bet at two to one, but I'll take it at five to two. You know, will you give me those odds? Right. And then, you know, and they can kind of go back and forth so they can negotiate on that. Also, this is going to bring out a lot of people with big egos who think they can handicap everything perfectly. Well, it, you know, maybe. And then, you know, people who really do know what they're, you know, dealing with when it comes to horse races, they'll yeah. be able to take advantage they can of that. Collect they'll, some money. Yeah. That's true. That's sure. true. Uh, also, another benefit of this is that wagers can be made in the middle of races. Wow. That's yeah, that, interesting. That's something that some bettors, you know, like doing because they kind of see how a race is developing and, you know, right. can make wagers. And since it's going to be, you know, all online, you, you know, you have your smartphone or tablet or whatever, you can make the re- wager real quick, you know, if you yeah. can uh, uh, meet up with somebody. So the nice thing about this is that once a player makes a wager, he's locked into those odds. Just like in regular in betting on other sports, right? It's as opposed to paramutual betting, where the odds on a wager they can change all the way up to post time. Sure, you know you, make you don't a, know you what make you're going to bet get. on a horse, and you get say two to one, and then by the time the race goes off, it's changed because somebody's put a lot of money down, or nobody's put any money down. Right, put a lot of money on another horse. Mm-hmm. So you, yeah, you just kind of wait and see what your odds are. That's why everyone's waiting till the very end to make their bets. <laughs> to, right? So yeah, that's probably a, a better indication of you know the true odds that you're going to get. Right, you know, if right. if you do win the wager. So on the latest episode of Gambling with an Edge, they talked about it very briefly, and they mentioned that the vig that the house would take would be five percent. Some of the articles I read, read had the figure as high as twelve percent. So who knows what the real you know vig is going to be? You know, once it gets, gets going, then uh, yeah, you know, well, we'll that may idea. change by race to race too, right? Uh, sure. Oh yeah. More action on a race, maybe the vig will be less. Less action, maybe the vig will be more. It's possible. It's very possible. I don't know. You know, is it based on you know just strictly on how much money is wagered, or you know, I don't know. That's a good question. Now, some critics are saying, well, this is going to hurt action at the track. You know, if people can maybe get better odds, you know, doing this exchange wagering. But proponents of it are saying, no, you know, what's going to happen is this because this is going to increase interest in the sport. It's kind of a waning interest, right? Horse racing. is, And uh, also some of the exotic bets like trifectas and pick sixes. You're not going to be able to do that through exchange wagering. You know, so you would still have to go to the track or off track betting to to make those bets. Right. I don't think that many people go to tracks anymore. Yeah. I, I, most of the people I I know who horse bet do it online. But even if they do it online, that's still part of the paramutual. Right. right? You know, it's still part of that. So I don't know. Ultimately, the number of people taking advantage of this might not be that large. Because initially, it's it's going to be limited to New Jersey residents. Right. Now, right. you say residents. You have to live in the state? I believe so. Or can so, you just be there? That's a good question. Maybe it is like that, where you just have to be in the state to actually take advantage of that. I, I don't know. That's a good question. It's yeah. probably one or the other. Because I'm thinking, you, you know, May 10th, 
That's my mother-in-law's birthday. Uh-huh. And she's flying to San Diego. Uh-huh. So maybe she should get a plane from Minnesota mm-hmm. to New Jersey, right. make a few wagers, yeah. be one of the first people to try that, yeah. and then fly here. Well, we'll run that by her, see yeah. if she's willing to make I'll that detour she, yeah, before she comes She's here. actually yeah. been to horse races, so... <laughs> Anyway, I don't know how big it's going to be as far as, you know, money and people, but I think the concept here is huge. Because imagine if this kind of thing could spread to, you know, real sports betting or wagering on on virtually anything. Right, right. Right, where there's basically this brokerage that just brings bettors together. So anyway, the concept here could be huge. And, you know, maybe this is the first step. But Yeah, they had something like this then. Before we went to Rincon on um, Friday night, I could make a wager that you weren't going to win, mm-hmm. you know, X amount of dollars. Right. And somebody could bet against me or with me or whatever. Right. And then I'd collude with the other yeah, person. Yeah, right. <laughs> to make sure that... Uh, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just wouldn't lend you any money and then you wouldn't be able to... <laughs> I wouldn't be able to play. I'd yeah, be, I'd just have to watch. Out. Yeah, no, that's true. Hey, speaking of uh, horse racing too, uh, Kentucky Derby is coming up here. Saturday, May 7th. This is going to be the last episode before the Kentucky, Kentucky Derby, Derby. Uh, is. Are we going to bet on the Kentucky Derby this year? We you know, I haven't read year. a thing about it. Well, I mean, they don't have the horses yet, right? Yeah. So, but I, mean, uh, I have no idea. All right. Well, I'll put some pressure on you. Maybe that Thursday before I'll go out to Barona here when they have off track betting. Make a wager. Yeah. Make a wager. Yeah, we should just, just load up a bunch of money on one horse and pray. Sure. You yeah, know. pick one. That's yeah, not we'll bad. Just if pick one. Yeah, pick it to win and, yeah. and that'll be it. Maybe the horse with yellow colors. All right, so you're not going to look at the odds. Well, you just no, decided just right yellow now. colors. Just, yeah. It'd be what? easy to pick out during the race. All right, that the yellow one, really stands. The, out. All right, the one that has the most yellow. The most yellow. There we're going to do. Yeah, the most yellow. That's what I'm going to use. The scientific method. All right, right. Uh, you know, listeners, if we forget this, remind us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that we do this stupid thing. And then uh, on the yellow horse, <laughs> maybe I'll start playing more slots. <laughs> <laughs> it's another good. It's another good idea. Yeah. Hey, thanks to everyone who's been clicking through our Amazon link. Remember, when you're going to buy something through Amazon, go to our page first, youcanbetonthat.com, and click through our Amazon link at the top of the page. That way, when you make a purchase, we get a little kickback that helps cover the costs of hosting the show, and it doesn't cost you a thing. You pay the same price just like normal. All right, let's do it. Let's go to our voicemail hotline. Remember, call our hotline at 951-292-4377. That's 951-2-WAGERS. 951-2-WAGERS. And maybe we'll play your clip on the show. So last episode, we were talking about how uh, when we were at Cromwell, the dealers were telling us that they were going to have a party pit and that the craps table in that party pit on weekends late at night, was going to have 100 times odds. So it turns out the news is even better than that. Yeah, and I want to say we had a part in that. Yeah, (laughs) maybe we did. You know, we were pushing for it pretty hard. The news is better than that, and the first that we heard about this good news was from this call from Jim. So let's hear from Jim. Hey, Mark and Mike. Jim from New York calling. I've enjoyed playing dice with you the past couple of years at Vim. Hope to see you again uh, this October. I'm calling on Sunday April 17th, I'm in Las Vegas. I just want to give a quick uh, report on some craps conditions. I stayed for a couple days at uh, downtown Grand, and I'm happy to report that they still have the uh, free buy bets on the 4 and 10. No VIG. Uh, you can bet $5 or anything up to their limit on that with no VIG. Good. I talked to the dealers about that. One dealer told me they're going to make it permanent. Oh, I think Obviously, we did that. know that for sure. <laughs> but he said that, you know they regard it as a big success, and they plan to keep it. The other interesting thing on crap conditions, uh, I, I moved over, over to Bally's uh, yesterday, and uh, what I like to do from Bally's, I usually take a walk down to Casino Royale because they, they let you uh, play 100 times odds there. So uh, I've enjoyed that game in the past, and I made the walk today and played down there. On my way back, I just happened to walk through Cromwell on my way back to Bally's, and I took a peek at the tables, and they had 100 times odds. Both tables. I I talked to a dealer. I said, when did you guys start that? He said, two days ago, which would have been Friday the 15th. He didn't know if they were going to keep it for a long time or whatever. But in any case, it's uh, 100 times odds at the Cromwell at their dice tables for now. Anyway, just wanted to make that report. Thanks for your uh, show. Take care. Bye. So sure enough, 100 times odds. Yeah, that's great news. All their tables at the Cromwell. Yep. And since then, you know, we've had other reports too. Yep. Yep. Sure enough. It's all the time. My brother was there just a few days. That's right. He actually sent us a picture of Of the the plaque, you know, on the table. So they went, they made plaques. Yeah. It wasn't just some, you know, some scribbled marker on there. So it's like, this is probably going to be there for a while. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This is a huge deal. All right. Now, 
granted, a hundred times odds is probably not going to have a lot of effect on players like me. Or, right? Be- or most players for that matter. Most players. Even, no, even that's true. players who gamble a lot. I yeah. mean, they're not going to put 25 on the line with two and a half thousand odds. Right. And even if I'm at a $5 table, the most maybe I'll put is 10 times odds if that's, you know, what's offered. So right. you're right. Very few people are ever going to have a hundred times odds, but you're somebody who's going to benefit from this for sure. Because you could, if, if it's a $5 table, you can go up $5 on the line, 0.6 or, or eight, Put 125 behind, or you know, 150, yeah, or you know, or, however much. Yeah, probably 250 or something. Yeah, right. I mean, right. I'm going to put more odds back there because I'm getting the true odds. Right. And here's another reason it's a big deal. This is a strip casino, right? And the strip is getting a reputation for you know having gambling going down the tubes, right? Right. And you know, here's a strip casino that's actually doing something good for the players, gambling wise. Yeah, they're right? trying to get gamblers back. It seems, whereas other casinos seem to be driving them away. Right. Steve Wynn. Right. And you know, we were worried when Steve Wynn went to double odds, and on the phone on his phone call, he was trying to like pressure other casinos to follow suit. Right. Like you know, this is the way and the he future. He does command a lot of pressure. I mean, yeah. You know, they listen to him. So this is great that it, you know it's a strip casinos doing this. Plus, this is a Caesar's property. This isn't like it's one of the independent strip casinos, right? right this is, right. you know, one of the granddaddies, right? Caesars Entertainment, and there's a casino, and they're doing this. Yeah, my brother was there on a Thursday around noontime. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, kind of midweek. It's not Friday yet. Right. It's middle of the day. He couldn't get on the table. Yeah. He could not get on the table. It yeah. was packed. Yep. So there you go. Yeah. I mean, if you had asked me, would it be hard to walk up and get a, get a spot on a table at Cromwell's on Thursday at noon? I'd say, no, you'll, there'll be like four people. That's right. We've never had trouble. You know, no. even though we love to play there and we think it's a great place. Yeah, we've never had trouble getting on a table. Right. Yeah. He couldn't get on. It was full. Yeah. I sure hope this kind of thing spreads. I mean, it's good news for craps players right now in Las Vegas, right? These free buy bets still down yeah. at downtown Grand. Right. And then this hundred times odd. So. Yeah, I think they're making the right move because they're trying yeah. to attract players. Yeah. You know, and they're saying, okay, yeah, we'll still have our club Mm -hmm. and we'll still have the nightclub. We'll still have all this, but we're going to get some players too. Yeah. You know, from a casino standpoint, to me, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, we actually have another call related to this from Marty. Hey guys, love the show. It's Marty from Northern California. Hey, uh, I just spent a whole day playing dice over at the Cromwell and I played there a lot of times before that, but it is indeed true. It is hundred times odds on all the dice tables, which is great. But it's even better than that. They also allow put bets, which almost nobody that's above 10 times odds will allow a put bet. And the third thing is, is they actually rate you on the entire bet. So, again, a lot of the other places that do 10 times odds or more, they only rate you on your flat bet. So if you've got $100 on the line and $10 behind the line, they're rating you as a $10 better. A lot of the places assume that because the house has no advantage on that odds bet, they're not going to rate you on it. So it's actually the best of a world. This may be the best dice game on the planet. Um, 100 times odds, $10 game, put bets allowed at any time, and full rating. So uh, pretty sweet. I just don't know how long it's, how long it'll last. I uh, talked to the casino manager last night, and uh, and they said they're just doing it to bring in more people. But yet, it's funny, they're, they're not advertising it anywhere. So I think they're kind of wading into this pond to see how, if they get hurt on it uh, and if they're going to keep it around. But all the signage is up. But again, no advertising. They're just kind of letting the letting the word get out there through social media. Anyway, love the show, guys. Have a good one. So there so, you go. Even better news. Yeah. So when is the last flight on Friday? <laughs> That's a good question. When did we go? It was like 8 o'clock, something like that. Yeah, yeah, we need to get on that. I mean, seriously, that is the best crap game I've ever heard of. Yeah. If you're real, Now, who knows what the ratings really mean, right? We've always talked about how table ratings are kind of voodoo yeah. anyway. But, but if you are getting rated on your odds, mm-hmm. oh my God. Yeah. You yeah. know, imagine how much rating you could occur in like a five-hour session yeah. with 100 times odds. Oh, especially somebody like you, Dr. Mike. Yeah. I, I mean, mean you're really. you're going to get some yeah. good rating. Any, everyone is. Yeah, plus they allow put bets. And it's true, right? It's hard to find a place that offers yes. high odds and allows put bets. Now, put bets, go back and listen to episode 54. We talk in detail about put bets. But basically, a put bet is a come bet that you make with odds. And when the odds are high, like a casino like this, making that bet is actually a better wager than a place bet. Yes. And and a lot of people will say, well, place bets allow me to go up faster. I can press my place bets and get to a higher level quicker. But with put bets, see, you can just, with 100 times odds, just increase your odds. Oh, yeah. You can do that right. in the middle of any, you know, roll, you know, oh, before the next roll, your six has $100, $100 odds. All of a sudden, give me, give me 
Three hundred odds. Yeah, right. Like exactly. Two more. Still it's just on the five dollar uh, flatbed, right? right? So yeah, it's better than a place bed. <laughs> yeah, it is. So yeah, fantastic news. So yeah, that's going to be. We're definitely going to be playing a Cromwell uh, next time we go. Hopefully, yeah. they'll still have and, it. And everyone should be. There should be a line out the door. Yeah. for that. Man, I hope this spreads. Wouldn't that be great if it just if starts spreading? If there is a line out the door, it will spread. You know, Flamingo will mm-hmm. do it. Sure. C- Caesars right? will get it to their other properties. Yeah. They won't want to lose. Business. I would just love for this to be the opposite of what we thought was going to happen because yes. of Wind's move. Uh, it would be right. just. That would be just well. Tremendous. It'd be great to see Win convert to it finally under pressure. <laughs> yeah. Like right, nobody. I don't think there. that's gonna happen. Yeah. I don't think that's gonna happen. All right, let's move on. Let's hear from Will. Hey guys, this is Will from North Carolina again. Just kind of giving you the follow up call. It's my last call about how me and my friend uh, just got back from Vegas, where we uh, went and we uh, were convinced by our that awesome uh, Asian lady player to play all the hard ways um, and been to parlay them every single time they hit. And we had such a fun time doing that with her. She was so awesome and fun to play with that we decided we were going to do that a little bit more on the trip. We were already down. We might as well try something to kind of see what happens. So we ended up going downtown, and it worked out so well. Um, we actually, a couple of times, we had a $2 bet down on the hard six at the uh, Golden Nugget, and we turned that into $180, and that was really, really exciting. And then right afterwards, we went to Golden Gate, and the same exact thing happened on the hard eight. We couldn't believe our luck. This was so fun and so awesome. And uh, it, what we really noticed about it is it's really cool, too, because the dealers love it when you do that. First off, you know, we always, like, tip them. Like, we tip them, you know, $25 each every time we hit that 180 bet. But it was kind of like you guys were saying on your last episode how even, you know, some dealers will give you advice on what to play. But even just in general, the dealers always encourage you to bet more. They always like you to bet as many different things on the table as possible. And what I love is they love it when you parlay. They think it's exciting and fun. Um, and maybe it's because they think you might, they might get tipped or maybe they just like to see the action on the table. Um, and that's something we kind of noticed. We were actually, uh, playing at the D and we actually had our hard ways down. Uh, we hit a hard four. Um, we decided to parlay it and the dealers liked that. And, well, you know, a little while later, hit again. And so we take our money. I'm pretty sure that was, what, $56. And um, it was funny. The, uh, the pit boss and the dealers were both encouraging us and saying, oh, come on, you should you should probably that 56 too, and, and keep it all on there. But we couldn't do that. We were just like, okay, we're not that gutsy, so we decided to take the money. And what do you know? The very next roll out, hard four hits again. <laughs> and we were very, very happy, of course, to get another 56. But the dealers and the pit boss, they could just could not stop teasing us about that the whole rest of the time we were playing. They're like, we told you, we told you, you should have parlayed it. You could have had, I think it would have been like, what, 464 out of it. Um, and it was just really, really funny. And uh, and that's something that was really interesting about the whole thing is, um, you know, it, it's fun to have the, the dealers and all the players together. That's what makes crap so fun is when you're all making these big bets when they all hit together. So I was a little curious about uh, asking you guys, have you ever kind of convinced other players to kind of, you know, play a certain way, maybe not directly or like really getting them on, on them about it, but just kind of, you know, maybe nudge them into it or have other players ever convinced you to bet a certain way? Because that's happened to me sometimes where, you know, sometimes you're like, oh man, yeah, you should go up on the feature with us and, you know, I'll just throw the bet in just for fun, you know, and that, to me that's what's so fun about craps. It's just such a, you know, communal game. And it was really just interesting, though, how we actually did so much better on this trip betting that crazy way because we know that, of course, the better way to bet using combats in the place in the six and the eight, we know the house edge is a lot smaller, and we know there's just the variance of the game, the luck of the game, that we ended up doing worse when we were betting that way compared to the hard ways, but um, it was just really, really fun, so we'll have to kind of think about that going forward if we want to bet that way or not, but anyway, I just figured I'd say you guys, you know, you guys. Will gets cut off there, I think he hit the our three-minute three limit to hard ways. I don't ever bet hard ways. I mean, no. you know, I don't, but... I admit that they are fun yes. and it's a huge part of your game. It, you know, yeah, you, it's that's, a, sometimes it makes or breaks me. Yes. Right. You know? One of the things he mentioned about the dealers liking it, you got to remember almost all the dealers are gamblers. Yes. Right? Uh-huh. Yep. And so they love to see somebody parlay something and hit something. Oh big. yeah. Even if you don't tip them, they love that. Oh sure. And you know, of course, if you're winning, you're going to tip them too. So yeah. there's some motive there, yep. but they love that. Yep. And the other night, it's just a real quick side story. At Harris Rincon on the fire bet, they can only have five dollars bet for the dealers. Maximum, Maximum right? Because they don't so want the dealers to win more, more than any single, single person play, at the right. table, right? So when it goes over the five, if people tip more, they take their extra money and drop it in the box. So they had seven bets up there. So they took two dollars off and they're gonna drop it in the box. I'm standing next to the stick and I said, Here's two more dollars, give yourself a horn uh-huh. instead of you know pocketing that. So the roll comes eleven. Now, I've got a um, two-way world, me and the dealers anyway, so I always parlay that. So my $25 goes to 80 Their nickel goes to 16 And then the $4 that they won on the, um, on the horn bet, I said parlay that. So they had two $16 bets. 
Then aces came up, mm-hmm. so they get 108 times two. And then aces came up again, <laughs> yep. so they got another 108 times two. So they got what's that? Four thirty two. Uh-huh. You know, off a two dollar bet that yeah, they were right. gonna, <laughs> that's and right. boy, they were excited, <laughs> and that's why they love it. I oh, mean, who course, doesn't sure. love that? Yeah, I mean, yeah. As far as convincing other players to make bets or vice versa, I'm pretty disciplined. You know, typically I won't change the way that I bet. You'll pressure me a lot of times. Yeah. Hey, Mark, throw out a dollar in a hard way or, yeah. you know, hot <laughs> I'm still trying. I'm yeah. still trying to get you to but I don't. But how about you? I know you've convinced oh, people I've, to make bets. I've convinced and, a lot of people like, oh, we should do this or yeah, that. And they yeah. do that. And I've changed, I've changed the way I bet sometimes based on other people. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll give you a good example. Remember a couple of weeks ago, we, uh, one of the guys that we know was uh, playing the don't and he had an interesting system of the don't, right? Mm-hmm. Where he would not bet on the first roll. Not on the, on the come so, out roll, yeah, right? So he had no money interested in the point. Right. But after that, he would make a don't come mm-hmm. and then the next number. So in, in his theory was like, well, now I'm kind of playing with all of you. If the point comes up, I'm happy for you. It doesn't hurt me. Mm-hmm, right. And, you know, if seven comes up, I win that number there. Mm-hmm. And it wouldn't have, you know, it would affect and, us And maybe anyway. he wins that bet when the seven comes on the come out roll because right, right. he's already up maybe, there. Right. Maybe and then everybody's happy. you make your happy. point and then the seven comes out on the come out mm-hmm, roll and then right. he wins and everyone's happy. And, you know, we thought about that. That's a great way to play the don't. Yeah, if you, sure. I mean, especially if you're playing with your buddies. Yeah, I mean. And you let's know, say you're on the don't, yeah. and your buddies are on the pass line, yep. you know, then you can both win. It yep. increases <laughs> but, your chances. Yeah, potentially you could both win in those cases. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, I mean, there's there's a way. We we never thought of that. And that kind of would change me playing on the don't. Yeah. We don't play the don't very often. Are you no. virtually never. Sometimes right. I will, but I won't play if we're on the same table. No, not you and I. But yeah. you will play on the table with other people you know. Yes, I will. Yeah, that are out there. Yeah. I mean, I know I've seen... Angering them. <laughs> yeah, yes. angering them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's listen to a call from Phil. Hi, Mark and Dr. Mike. This is Phil from Fairfax. I enjoyed meeting you guys out at Vizit. And it was fun gambling with you at the $5 craps tables at the downtown Grand that uh, free buy bets on the 4 and 10s. That's very gambler friendly. I wish we saw more of that in Vegas. I've got a question about uh, local casino openings. As we get ready for the MGM National Harbor to open outside of D.C. at the end of the year, where do new local casinos source their dealers from? And can we expect pretty green dealers early on and maybe have to watch out for some dealer mistakes during the first few weeks that a a new local casino is open? Thanks a lot, and love your show. Bye. Yeah, yeah, it was nice meeting uh, Phil at, yes, very uh, nice. in Vegas. Luckily, he didn't walk uh, with us over to the Cosmo. He missed that disaster. Yes, so. <laughs> he, was, he was smart. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, new casinos, as far as where they get dealers from, we don't know exactly. I imagine, you know, that they solicit them. They probably a solicit of, them from dealer schools. Right, and I've heard a lot of dealers who leave casinos right. to go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Like there's a dealer leaving Rincon going to New Orleans. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I'm sure they recruit from other places. Places, right, you know, right, saying, right. "Hey, you know, have you ever thought about living here? Mm-hmm. You know, especially like New Orleans, like cost of living is cheaper than Southern California." Yes, but definitely, you will have dealers. You know, when a casino first opens, you're going to have green dealers. Maybe they know the game well, but as they try to get used to the new casino policies and culture, right. they may make mistakes. So that is something that you have to watch out for. Yeah, I don't think it'd be terribly bad, though. I mean, we've never been to a casino right when it opened. But I did I, once, but I, very briefly. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't I would, find room anywhere. I would think it it's not that bad because I'm sure they must put them through some pretty rigorous training. Yeah. And most of them have probably dealt somewhere else and they've been offered, you know, better whatever mm-hmm. to go there, probably better um, benefits and mm-hmm. things like that. Yeah. Advantage players can definitely find great plays at casino grand openings. The slots are probably looser. Video poker in particular probably has better pay tables than they ultimately will have. Probably very good to get people in there right away. Right. Maybe there are some table games uh, where an advantage player can find a, a good play. Uh, the problem for us recreational players, though, is that when you go to a grand opening, the place is packed. Not just with, you know, regular people, but also these advantage players who are descending on the place. So if there is some great play to be had, you know, we as recreational gamblers are probably not going to find it. Right, right. All right, next call. Hey, Mark and Dr. Mike. This is uh, Carter from Portland calling in again. Uh, I just had a little question I thought I'd ask you guys. I don't know. You might have been asked already. 
But as I've been playing craps more and taking an interest, I've been, you know, paying a little attention to dice setting and dice control and whatnot and setting the dice and drawing it in a certain way, trying to, you know, maybe just influence certain numbers or less sevens and and I've been experimenting with it a little bit as I've been playing. Uh, sometimes, if there's nobody on the table, and uh, I might take a few extra seconds to set the dice and do the hard way set with the grip and throw it in a certain way. And then other times when the table's full, you know, or I don't feel like doing it, I'll just pick them up and toss them. And I've had success both ways, you know. I've mm-hmm. had rolls <laughs> no uh, or hands where I was setting the dice and throwing in a particular way where I had a really good hand with multiple rolls. And then I've also had ones where I've sevened out immediately. And then same thing with the, like, random rolls. I've sevened out immediately, and I've had maybe some of the better rolls I've ever had were just random tosses. But... I was wondering how you guys felt about it. Do you approach it in any certain way? Do you guys just pick them up and toss them? Do you have any way you like to set them or throw in a certain way? I was curious. You guys probably tossed more dice than anyone. I thought, how, I'm wondering how you felt about it. Um, pretty much all on the fence that it's not really doing anything, but I do kind of like to do it sometimes. I feel, it just feel like it makes it a little more fun. Like you're doing a little extra something to influence the numbers, you know, which I think is bullcrap, but. I think it's a little fun sometimes, but I don't always do it. I was wondering what you guys thought about it. Also, real quick, a little trip report. Last week, I went to my local casino, and I had a session that wasn't going very well. I bought it initially for 500 bucks and was down, and then I bought it again for 200 and I was down to, like, my last 70 bucks. And it was my last roll, and I'm like, okay, I'm putting it all out there. I'm rolling the dice the very last time, and then I'm walking away. And I figured I'd lose it all, and I put it all out there, and I started rolling. And long story short, when I finally sevened out and it colored up, the dealers gave me back 750 bucks, $50 more than I was in for, and I got it all back on my very last roll of the night. So I sure looked at it as a big win and uh, was pretty happy. (laughs) Better than nothing. That's a sweet way to end a trip. Oh, and then Carter got a cut off too. Yeah, that's the, it's that three minute uh, <laughs> uh, limit that uh, Google Voice has, and we don't have any control over that. But yeah. well, you know what his story points out about his trip report, though, is you just wait for that big hand, right? <laughs> that's his coming. Craps, and, 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 <laughs> that big hand's coming. That yeah. big hand's coming. He's just lucky he hit it before he was wiped out. <laughs> yes, yes. Right, yes. and then, you know, we've been there plenty of times. Yep. Sometimes we hit it on the first. One when we're there, mm-hmm. <laughs> which never works out too well for us. <laughs> we get too aggressive. Yeah, it's better if it, we hit it towards the end of our mm-hmm. stay. Yeah, make it back. Yeah, you know, we set the dice sometimes. We don't think it has any effect. No, we're doing it, it for fun. It's, it's doing it for fun, right? My favorite thing is to, well, as soon as the dice, I pick them up, the first time I throw them, I set them to something. It might be 4-2, it might be a 5-3, it might be a hard 8, might be an 11 or a 2. And then I just, every time I roll them, I set it to that again and try and roll it the same way. <laughs> right. It doesn't make any difference. Yeah. I've had rolls like that where I immediately <laughs> seven out. I've had ones that went forever. Yeah. So it doesn't make any difference, but it's kind of fun. Yeah. And, you know, I just kind of think to myself, well, I'll just do the same thing. And if the roll's going good, you convince yourself <laughs> in your head that it's going good because you're doing the same yeah. thing. There is one thing I don't like to do. I hate to like pick the dice up and just whip them as hard as I can down there. Well, now, see, it's interesting you say that because my favorite way to roll now... Pick them up quick. ...is to pick them up quick and shoot almost like it's one action. Like, I'm not picking them up and then shooting... I'm picking them up, shoot. In the same you know, like motion. it's one motion. Now, I'm not chucking them down there. No. I'm not no, throwing, not them, throwing hard. them hard. No. See, that's what the, the hard is what I don't like. Yeah. Some people throw them so hard, and yeah. I hate that because number one, you know, you're more likely to hit some chips or mess mm-hmm. things up, which, right. which slows the game down. Yeah. Number two, you're more likely they're going to pop up and hit somebody, which <laughs> yeah. I, and I've done that. We've all done that, and you feel yeah. terrible. Yeah. And and number three is they're more likely to go off the table, which slows mm-hmm. the game down. Yeah. I'm right. I'm all about the game going quick, so I like to do a nice. Well, roll that's that's why I, I like a quick game too. So that's why it's like pick up throw. Yeah, you know, yeah. pick up throw. Oh so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we've mentioned it a million times. We can't stand the people who sit there and play with. Yeah, them. not for and, too long. You know, a couple it, of turns of the dice is fine, but yeah. But when it gets to like you know, it's been thirty seconds mm-hmm. and they're still fidgeting with them. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. yeah. Okay, call from Martin. Hey, Mark, Dr. Mike. Martin from Northern California. Hey, just got back from a quick weekend trip to Vegas. A couple of things. Um, we're actually out there to see Guns N' Roses at the new uh, arena, T-Mobile Arena. Great arena. And actually a really good show. Well, 
this time, uh, for the first time in a long time, I stayed out at the Delano and, uh, and played a lot of dice there at Mandalay Bay. Interesting thing there, unlike the Harris properties where I normally play, they've got the uh, tall, small, and hit them all. And after, uh, you know, 20 years of playing dice and, and never hitting a six-way on the, uh, the fire bat, I actually hit two, I hit them all within an hour of each other. Craziest thing I've ever nice. seen. So nice, uh, nice hit there. Kind of interesting. Um, on Saturday afternoon, I took a walk down, or actually took a cab and went down to kind of the middle of the strip. And uh, back down to Casino Royale, I haven't been in there since they did the remodel there. And the remodel is actually nice. I mean, it's always been kind of a crappy little place. Uh, the remodel came out really nice. The bizarre thing is they've got 100 times odds are back. So 100 times odds, $5 games, two games going on, both full, kind of the long side of tables, you know, like an aircraft carrier. But what they've done is they've moved the dice tables from the front of the casino to the very back of the casino, almost into the food court. So you're playing dice next to the Cinnabon, which is a kind of a bizarre thing. But again, 100 times odds is good. And uh, even if you're not taking full odds, it's kind of nice to be able to, you know, $5 bet and bet two or 300 uh, in odds, so it's uh, it's kind of a nice deal there. So anyway, trip report. Have a good one, guys. Love the show. See ya. Yeah, we got this call from Martin before the Cromwell had changed to 100 times odds. So right. now you don't want that Cinnabon smell. Yeah. And I don't know, I might kind of like it. Well, yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, when he said they were in the back, I was like, oh, that's better because I didn't like them up front. And then when they're close to Cinnabon, I'm thinking, that would drive me crazy. I mean, the only thing better than a hard eight is like a Cinnabon, right? <laughs> Yeah, well, now if you don't like that, you can go over to the Cromwell. So you have a choice of, of where you take your 100 times odds now on this strip. Uh, you know, he got me thinking about this all tall, all small, hit them all kind of yep. thing. Mm-hmm. We need a better name for that. We need a name that everybody agrees on. So, you know, you say fire bet. Everyone knows what you're talking yes, about. Yes. This It's too long. Well, the problem... We need a quick... A yeah, quick I, yeah the problem is, you know, there are two... I don't know if these are patented or what but they're you know some are called the bonus bet right and some it's called the features right. bet right so or feature or bonus we could say that but that's not very descriptive no i want a short descriptive name that describes that so if anyone out there can think of a short descriptive name that we could just start saying and everyone knew we were talking all about small that. tall all small tall all small tall is that all good enough for you? Small tall. Can you handle it? Well, that's that's a little rhythmic. I like that. I like the rhythm too. All it. small it's, tall. All small tall. Yeah. Okay. Let's. That's our. That's our choice. That's how we're going to refer to it now. All, all small t- tall. All small tall. So great. I'm going to say that. all tall small. Oh, right. <laughs> all, <laughs> all small. S- all small tall. A S T. Yeah, it's alphabetical order. Yeah. Just remember that. A-S-T. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A-S-T. We'll call it the A-S-T bet yeah. sometimes. Okay. Now, we'll see if anyone else can uh, come up with a better name. I'm sure they can. No. I don't think so. Oh, it's perfect. No. It's so descriptive. No. It's an alphabetized. It's perfect. <laughs> you don't know how lame we are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I do, Dr. Mike. All right. Let's hear from uh, Robin over at Anytime Gambling. Hi, guys. This is Robin from Anytime Gambling. Uh, I hope you got the Twitter I sent you about the topic you mentioned last week concerning Mohegan Sun's momentum card. did want to tell you that Pachenga is uh, also looking into using that. And except for those two places in the United States, they're the only ones that are looking at going absolutely ticketless. In any case, I hope you received it. Love the podcast. And uh, have a great time this weekend where you go to Harris for your usual crap session. Ciao. Yeah, so on the last episode, we talked about these cards that Mohegan Sun now has. It's like a cash card you can use right. in the machines. And it turns out Robin had actually uh, written a, a blog post about this like a couple of days before our show aired. So, uh, you know, go to NE Time Gambling. That's N, the, the letter Letter N, N right. The letter for e, New England Time, New gambling, England time yeah. gambling. But we did not know that Pachanga was also thinking about starting this too. That's a, a casino relatively close to us. Yeah, well, the so moment that happens, we'll... we'll We'll find out about it. Yeah, we'll yeah we'll run up there and check. We'll it out. look into that. My understanding is that Pachanga really sweats the money. Yeah, you know, so yeah, they they have a reputation here in yeah. San Diego County for being a little tight. Yeah, but anyway, I guess that's good news. We'll see. Okay, let's hear an Atlantic City trip report from Mike. Hey guys, how's it going? This is Mike, Pennsylvania. Before I just give a trip report for a recent trip in AC, set the Fort Gauda last weekend. Uh, I got a call room. It's my uh, birthday weekend, so I wanted to go celebrate a little bit. Usually, me and my girlfriend will play blackjack. That, that kind of went up and down, but I said, you know what? I really want to try craps. Now, I've been trying to explain, like, some of the basic rules, which I don't even know all of them, but I'm just trying to start out with pass line and some comebacks. And my girlfriend's just rolling her eyes at me like, 
I don't even want to try to figure any of this out. Well, all the money we lost at Blackjack, we made up for a little crap for all dinner. So that was cool. And then played some more Blackjack, kind of up and down, and going to bed. Well, I just had to go back to the craps table. And I must have been out there till 5 in the morning. Sounds like you, Dr. Probably Mike. Probably a yep. good thousand bucks. Came back down to my bankroll, which I, I, I made sure to at least keep enough for what we started with. I think I originally bought it for about 300 So I walked with a 500 But, you know, again, the eye rolls in the morning. But you were up how much? Why don't you keep some? So, all in all, it was a great time. The dealers must have loved me because I was pretty drunk, and I was just tipping like crazy. I mean, every time I'd win, I'd throw them something. At one point, I threw them like $75. So they just kept saying, you know, we really appreciate it. So... All in all, I had a great time. I meant to spend more time there, but I last minute had to work that day. So in the morning, I said, you know what? What the heck? Let's go ahead and get a room. Went over to Harris, and uh, that was a great time. As far as blackjack goes, really hard to find regular blackjack. There was six to five everywhere, and I was just disgusted with it. <laughs> Eventually, with enough searching and wandering around, we were able to find, you know, decent blackjack game. And again, girlfriend wasn't too interested in watching any of the craps, so did another uh, late-night crap session, this time at Harris, they see, and, uh, man, was that table just all kinds of fun. I mean, there was characters every time someone hit, they were screaming and running around the table, fist bumping everyone, hugging people. It was probably even more funny was the fact that I was sitting next to, like, the stereotypical uh, Jersey wise guys. You know, they were commenting, you know, what, what's the deal? I mean, this guy over here, you know, what, what, what's the deal? And so it was just, it was a riot. I had a great time. Walked away from the table. I think I bought into 300 and walked away with 1,000. As far as my first AC trip attempt, perhaps, both at Borgata and Harris, I'm up, and it was a good time. In the morning, me and my girlfriend usually have this bad luck streak where any gambling in the morning were loose. So it tended not We've to been do there. It. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, having our morning coffee and a, and a cigarette where, where we got on the road back home said, you know, let's just goof around at one of these video poker games, you know. I didn't even really pay attention to the payout. But, you know, we were just each put in 20 bucks and kind of pass the time. And here, my girlfriend hits four deuces with a bonus round payout. So uh, with that 20 bucks she put in, she walked away with 419 bucks. So I don't know if we're necessarily up for our morning gambling, but uh, it helped to get us in the winning direction and uh, <laughs> fight against our bad luck streak for morning gambling. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Appreciate all you guys do. And fun podcast. Very informative. See ya. That last morning right. of a trip oh, God. Is, is usually the worst, isn't yeah. it? Whether you're up or down. It, it's almost better <laughs> to stay up all night and then just leave, yeah, right? Yeah, right? Just leave. Just get the first stay, light in the morning. Yeah. And then so your night play, it's still con- con- it's still considered night play. <laughs> yeah, right? there you if go. You don't go right. bed, it's, it's, still right. it's still night play. Yeah. I like that he stayed up two nights late playing crafts. Yes. You know, you can sleep when you're over 95. Right. You get to right. 95, sleep all you want. Yeah, that's right. Up to that point, you know, why are you sleeping yeah it's like your dad he doesn't sleep on a trip no he's yeah. not 95 yet he's got he's a not 95 yet yeah exactly that's great they hit that uh on the video poker you know i don't know if you have heard this but our friend mary went up to harris this last saturday was dealt a royal really she didn't even have to draw to it wow. dealt a royal yeah and what was she playing dollars? 25 cents so oh, 25 but cents. a thousand bucks you yeah know, a thousand so. dollars no yeah. i didn't hear that yeah yep we've never gotten one all right i know I, what is the deal I, with that mary gets dealt one <laughs> I've, how many times have we had four to the Royal and I know, not, yeah, not gotten I know, it? I know. It's coming to that. Hopefully one of us eventually will hit it. Hey, we hit the fire bed eventually. One of us is going to hit a Royal. You know when eventually. I'll hit it? It'll be the night when I'm completely out of money and I'm playing quarters. <laughs> not $2. Not $2 a time, uh-huh. but a quarter. Yeah. And I, that's when I'll hit it. I've never yeah. seen you play quarter video poker. so I'd I like did to when see I played for you. Oh, well, thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, that, that I believe. Okay, let's hear from Wendell. So guys, it's Wendell from Denton, Texas. I met you at uh, at Pimp, and I've called before, and uh, I've been listening to your show a lot, and I know y'all like to play craps, and I've never played craps till last night. So I felt comfortable enough to play it, and as I was playing it, I could hear a lot of y'all's episodes and the numbers, you know, six and eight, come in, like a lot of stuff that y'all talk about, you know, was popping in my mind as I was playing. 
I was kind of intoxicated though, but I did pretty good. It was a it was a good time, and I could see why you guys play craps. It was really fun, and the whole Denton Dallas gang was there. Uh, DDB Denton Dallas Beyond podcast. We all went out there to Shreveport and just party together. So that was a lot of fun. So anyway, keep up the good work. All right. Good. Glad you had a good time. I, yes. I you know, it is a very social game. Oh, yeah, for sure. And mm-hmm. If you have a bunch of buddies or friends or, you know, or even just your girlfriend or wife, it's the best place to play. Yeah. There's the most talking. Yeah, it's 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 better, certainly better than slots. I right. mean, yeah, you can sit next to your spouse and play slots, yeah, but, but you know, one of you's you winning about? and the other's losing or right. whatever, and right, you know, even with blackjack, right? And one of you may be winning, the other losing. Usually it craps, you lose and win together. All right, next call. Hey, this is Jonathan from Alabama checking in with you guys. Uh, I was going to let you know about my trip I had this weekend to uh, Philadelphia, Mississippi. There's a uh, Choctaw Indian Reservation Casino there. Actually, two of them, Pearl River Resort, Superstar Casino, and Golden Moon Casino. They have about 10 craps tables, 20 times odds. They offer $5 and $10 minimums, and they also offer the small, tall, and all. It's all small talk. Saturday night, had a uh, five-hour crap session, uh, bought in, right around 700 bucks, and five hours later, cashed out for a little over 4700 Sweet. Took about two and a half hours for the dice to get around the table at one time. Two and a half hours to go around the table. That's a nice session. That's a very nice session, (laughs) yes. We'd be up. Yeah. The uh, tall bets were hit six times. And Six seemed times. to have trouble hitting the two and five each time is what kept us from getting all of them. But the five. The, <laughs> to hell with the five. I'll tell you right now, the five has haunted us. To yeah, hell with the has. five. Although the five is also the number that gave us the fire bet, too. Yes, so, it is. Yeah, it did give us the yeah, one six yeah, winner. It's but a love-hate boy, relationship with the five. five yeah. Yep. Last go-around of the night, the guy next to me hit every number and had $10 out there on each one. So it was about $2,500 paid out on that. And you guys ever get down it's a great little place we also have have some good uh casinos down on the coast Beau Rivage, which is part of them life and hard rock Biloxi. so uh guys ever get down you'd have a good time thanks i can never remember you've never played in mississippi correct no, okay all right i didn't think so but yeah golden moon was the name of that casino golden moon yeah so the two casinos on this uh this tribal resort basically yeah mm-hmm. i like golden moon that's yeah. a neat name yeah. for yeah. a casino you know uh, yeah, we're going to have to get down there eventually, too. Yeah. At least, uh, well, yeah, again, kind of like the Connecticut casinos, at least as far as I'm concerned. I don't know if it'll happen that soon, but maybe you'll get out there to Connecticut yeah, or I, Mississippi, one of those places. Well, I too. keep telling, it's not that far from um, Memphis and, uh, you know, Elvis and all that, so yeah. I can convince <laughs> my wife we got to go see Elvis. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, one last call. Um, yeah, I uh I follow up on my prep tournament question. They didn't even get in because they didn't qualify and watched a couple of rollers. And it is very difficult to read them because they're all going very high at the beginning. Every roll, they're placing $100 promotional chips right across. And either pressing or one guy would put $500 on the field and the 12 came out and he got 1500 and he just didn't sit back and watch guys play their money and he was pretty upset after that. The last three rows, I was told all the players get to pick what numbers they get to get. On the last row, three guys put all their money in on any seven and the last row was a seven and they win, win the tournament, the top and pictures. One on an any seven bet with 400, 300, and 250 on an any seven. And just so happened it came out on the final row and they won. But, um, I fit at the Fremont and I played five, six, eight. And at the Fremont, there's a counter. I got to 23 rolls. Oh, I forgot to say, I also picked a nine. I put two way nine, pair control on the nine. And I told the dealer, Marianne, what does she want to do? And during those 23 rolls, I hit the nine thir- Time and she oh, nice. the five dollar pair of control bet I gave her. She walked away with two hundred dollars for the dealer. And then later on in the day, I went back at thirty one rows and one of the best rows I've had. I also played at the Golden Nugget and the most unlikely thing I've ever seen on a come out roll. The shooter hit six, eleven, threes, or twelve, and one of the players was getting paid at one point eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars and then with that money that person made they put 250 on a hard six and it came out like i paid 2500 
And I was looking at this person like, oh, my God, how the hell do you know when to put the numbers down? But other than that, interesting experience at the prep tournament. And unfortunately, I didn't go aggressive early on, so I didn't make it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Mike, you would have cleaned up on that with six oh, yeah. in a row horn numbers, right? Well, Eleven, threes, five. and twelves. We saw five okay. not too long ago at Rincon, yeah. and that was a good roll. Yeah. But six, yeah. oh my god, <laughs> He's so nice for you. Yeah. yeah, you know, with those tournaments, again, you know, you're saying, oh well, I didn't get aggressive early. Well, you know, maybe that could it, it could have gone the that, other way. That right? could have been the way to go, right? right, if right. The numbers have come up differently. Yeah, and you know, putting all your num all your money on a any seven at the end, that's not a bad way. It's the most likely number to come up, <laughs> right. right? You know, even though it's more likely that it won't come up right, right. <laughs> right but no it's true and you know you have to see what everybody else is doing and you have to get lucky in these tournaments right because it's not many roles almost every tournament even ones that are highly skill based like say a texas hold'em mm-hmm. tournament mm-hmm. i mean there's a lot of skill involved in that but you need luck you still need to get lucky you still along need the way luck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah just yeah. just ask phil helmuth yeah yeah that's true right he'll tell you all if about luck it. weren't involved he'd win every tournament. Turn i think he said something to that effect right. yes and you know maybe what you do again we we kind of talked on the last episode about how you kind of maybe you do the opposite of what everybody else is doing right. but what if the roles have been terrible right away right and these people who are being real aggressive right away they get wiped out and then you're doing okay right. if they don't have any money left at the end they can't beat you yeah or maybe what you do is you get very aggressive but on the don't Right. You know, you make don't pass, don't come bets, right? So that's, right. you know, a different kind of a situation there where, you know, you're being aggressive. There's but no the way to figure way. that out. No, no. That, that's where luck is involved, mm-hmm. right, yep, in those yep. tournaments, in especially, term especially like craps tournaments. And we did a few earlier uh, eight years ago, and I won't do them anymore because for me, it's just a waste of time. Yeah, because I know what you <laughs> I mean. You know <laughs> what I mean? We're only in Vegas for a certain amount of time. Uh-huh. I mean, if we were there all week, yeah, I'd do some tournaments. Yeah. But when we have just a couple of days, I don't want to spend a tournament where I just hope to get lucky. Mm-hmm. Right. I'd rather play something and have more fun. And, and hope to get lucky on a real craps and, table, yeah, right? Where you, you're more likely to actually yeah, get some money back. Go home happier. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, that's going to do it for that, this episode. We're all caught up on our phone calls, so uh, I think we're good. Yeah. Hey, be sure to check out our TV listing showing all the gambling-related shows coming up within the next two weeks. We update those listings every Wednesday using a customized program to search through all the raw American TV data. Just go to our webpage, youcanbetonthat.com, and click on the link at the top that says TV listings. We'd love to hear from you. Call our voicemail hotline. Now that we have no more uh, backup on our hotline, it's 951-292-4377. That's 951-2-WAGERS. Or you can email us at youcanbetonthat at gmail.com. Also, follow us on Twitter at youcanbetonthat. We tweet when we're heading to a casino, and we'd love to meet up with you. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash you can bet on that. And finally, head on over to iTunes and write a review on us. When you do, it helps us get new listeners. What do you have to say, Dr. Mike? Well, uh, Mark, as you know, I stayed home from work today because I've got this terrible cold, so I'm going to apologize for that. You can hear it a little bit in your voice. It's not bad. And if you hear a few coughs, that's me. I've Mm -hmm. got this stupid cold. But... uh, I stayed home. It just happened the Padres played a day game. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I, saw that, yeah. I was laying in bed, kind of halfway sleeping, halfway watching the game. And they lost, mm-hmm. as yeah. usual. Mm-hmm. So I, yeah. I think now they've lost more than two-thirds of the games they've played. I think you're right. What are they, like 7 and 15? Something like something that. Something like so, that. Uh-huh. Something like yeah. 7 and 15. Okay. So, you know, if you project that out, oh, and, you know, they have tomorrow off Thursday, but then they go to L.A. for three games against mm-hmm. the Dodgers, which they'll get swept to. Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, I th- I don't think they're going to make like 60 wins this year. I think my 50 win prediction is going to come true. Oh, is that what you said? Because last episode, all you talked about was that they were going to have 81 shutouts. Was yeah, that right? right. Well, <laughs> they were going to be shut out 81, 81 times, times, right? Yeah. right, right. They got shut out last night? I uh, think last night they well, had another shutout. All right, but you need, you originally said 50 wins? Yeah, I, I had told a friend of mine at bowling that 50 wins, and he was like, oh, you're crazy. They're going <laughs> to win more. But they're on the pace to win about 50. Yeah, I think they'll win more than 50. If you, really? you want to if you want to do some exchange wagering on that, on I'll, that? I'll do that with you, yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't even say that because I'll get a lot of calls from people. 50 is not very many wins. <laughs> no, it's but not. right <laughs> now, if you project it out, it's like 53 wins uh, or something, the, right? The season's young. Yeah. <laughs> they're a bad team and why do we suffer with that uh, yeah, why, do we su- why do we put up that's, with that let's not bore people with our whining because I know we talk about it a lot anything else uh, no we just uh, let's hope we win uh, Friday night yeah let's hope we win we need it yeah alright thanks for listening Good night.